Hello and welcome to Merlin's Brick News, the weekly show on all things brick building where we talk about set updates and announcements from all the major brands, a few reading recommendations and mocks of the week as well. Information is presented as always by settb.org, the best source for set information on the internet. We are back. I know it's been a while. I don't know when I did record the last show. I think it was like almost half a year ago. But I've been quite busy. I can assure you that. So we have invested a lot of time in the site and a ton of features on ZTB.org or MerlinsBricks.com. Um, for instance, you now have a profile function on the site where you can maintain your own collection of sets from Lego, but also from all the other brands as well that we are covering here. You can define your favorites, um, availability alerts, uh, price alerts, stuff like that. So there's like a ton of function in here. So if you go on ZTB.org, you can find up here in the navigation profile and there you can uh, basically define all the stuff. There is a newsletter function where you get an automated email, basically where you can and configure, okay, I want to have a daily update on all new products from Lego, from Kobe, from Funhole, Kada. Only a select range of brands I'm currently supporting with this feature, but nevertheless, this is this is the way, or you can also have this as a weekly information. Um, but what on the cool things um, is that also now if you go into a set, so for instance, let's go into the Razor Crest. So if you have built it, you can give a star rating here. Like I said, you can just put it in your favorites list. You can put it in your collection. You can do this directly from every site on setdb.org for every set, for all, for the almost 12,000 sets that we are closing in on in the set DB. So that also means your collection, even so for instance, you have Lego and Kobe in your collection, you can maintain them as well. So obviously for pure Lego sets, there are other great databases out there, but I do believe we have a couple of interesting features to add here as well. Uh, including uh, coverage like where you can buy uh, the sets. Uh, for instance, here we have uh, Lego uh, UK, US, Amazon US, uh, Lego in the European Union, all this kind of stuff. Uh, what is what is in the sets? Like what are the minifigures? What are the pieces? So there's a ton of information there. But the cool thing I do believe is that of course we are cross brand. So you can, like I said, have the same feature set or so uh, for your Kobe set. Obviously we have much less information available for many of these brands. Like for instance, color distribution in the in the box is something that you can't that I cannot really do for Kobe because Kobe does not have there's no digital um, part lists available but for like I said from several other brands including Lego Brewrix we can do this because there are published lists etc etc um, so the feature set per brand is different but nevertheless you can maintain your entire collection that is new there was a lot of a lot of effort um, in the past merlinsbricks.com or setdb.org have been pure static sites and now you have the option to log in and basically maintain this stuff what I can what I would really also love you guys to do um, if you could give your perspective on on the products out there so for instance if you if you are building I oh know that's a bad example because it's not yet released on the market so let's use something else like I don't know what about is this a good example no it's not as well let's go on Kobe and here I want to show you something. So let's let's take the Messerschmitt um, 262 that is available. So if a set is available on the market um, and you have built it, uh, you can also rate it. So you can give up to 10 stars. And of course, the whole idea is that um, if you, we have enough of these votes um, or these ratings, I should rather say, then the rating, and I guess you could already see this for the Razor Crest, will be shown uh, in here as well for the community. So I think that is a great benefit for the community. And again, we have this not only for Lego, obviously you can go to Brickset, etc., and get great ratings for Lego sets as well, but we are offering this for Kobe and all the other brands. So that was enough of them of uh, self-marketing. So now let's move on to uh, the news of the week. And as always, we go through the brands in alphabetical order and we will start with the German brand Blue Bricks, which however also means usually when we talk about, about availabilities and prices, we are talking about EU um, availabilities for the for so for use you folks um, over in Asia Pacific or across the pond in North America. Um, I am sincerely sorry, but we have as always uh, time markers uh, as well. So if you just want to skip forward, but I can say Bluebricks has a couple of interesting things to offer. So this is an announcement of the 107349 by Bluebricks, the off-road SUV Texas. The interesting thing I do believe around this set. I mean, this is like. 
I'm not really sure if this is a photograph or more like a rendered picture, but it looks like that all these Technic pieces are like in a metallic silver color, which would be quite astonishing. I think we have never seen that before. And there's even a trans clear or maybe a trans dark brown uh, Technic panel in the back as well. So I find that quite interesting. Next to that, it's a typical Technic Jeep. So I've built from Happy Build, for instance, the J40. Toyota a couple of months ago and this thing here looks very similar so it, for my thing from the pure model design perspective it's nothing special it's just um, a Technic Jeep but oh not a Jeep but you know a SUV kind of uh, off-road vehicle let's put it that way but um, I think the color scheme that is what sets this thing apart it's going to have 1855 pieces uh, it's roughly 19 by 21 by 35 centimeters in size and Bluebricks will offer this under the BB Pro line. So Bluebricks Pro line, which basically means um, no digital instruction, um, unfortunately. Digital instructions you get only with the specials. And with that, we're moving on to a discounter, the 107556. So for some of you, this might be familiar, especially for the Europeans. Um, this is ID, of course, a German uh, discount chain. I think they are active in several European countries, including the UK, I think. Don't know how their coverage in North America is. Um, but anyhow, uh, Bluebricks does not have a license with them. And um, as this is a Bluebricks special, it's entirely without any prints or stickers for that matter. Obviously, that they are struggling a bit with here. I guess these, you know, I guess are like posters with, with offerings, what we see here on the left, but because they do not have any pet, pr pet printed pieces and in the Blue Week specials, it looks a bit rough from my point of view, a bit too simple. Um, I'm personally not a big fan of neither stickers or prints, but everything that is like a book or a newspaper or something like that should also be a printed tile in my point of view. Anyhow, uh, we have solar collectors on the roof. Again, not printed pieces, but obviously I think you can make greatly improve this thing. For instance, if you take a bunch of printed Lego tiles, put them on this design, and then I think you get a much more rounded, well-rounded building. However, this thing has only 460 pieces, so it's quite simple. Maybe also something for the kids room and then we have the search and rescue cruiser so this is the second time Bluebricks is doing this set so they have done this in the past the 107004 I guess this is pretty much a German thing um, because this is the German search and rescue organization um, and actually what is here in German on the box is basically they will uh, donate five euros per uh, set that they sell to the search and rescue organization which actually in German is Deutsche Gesellschaft zur Rettung Schiffbrüchiger. Um, uh, it's it's kind of a special thing because it's not from the government. So that I think may surprise some folks in the, in the international audience. But in Germany, we have the curiosity that search and rescue on the German seas uh, are organized by a private organization that is entirely based on donations. So there is no tax money in search and rescue in German waters, which is quite cool, I personally do believe. And however, Bluebricks has done this set before and, and last time they were not working with this organization and now they do, which I think is great progress, really loving that. And at the same time, it's I think it's a very good price, um, 120 euros, that's only four cents a piece. And again, there's the donation included. And always keep in mind for the international audience, especially for North Americans um, in Europe, um, that is always including tax. So um, I don't know, for instance, in Germany, there's 20% value at tax included in this price so that's quite a bargain anyhow let's move on to an announcement and they, this is from the blue brick star trek line and they are doing a borg drone bust uh which is quite astonishing if you ask me uh, and a bit ugly and i don't mean ugly by means bad brick design i mean oh it's a horrible thing i mean it, i think it's great i'm not really sure if i like the face especially in the mouse nose region looks a bit like I don't know, somebody has hit, hit him in the face or something. Um, it's a bit weird. But anyhow, um, it looks scary. And I think that is what they were aiming for. And I think there are not many brick built designs I've seen in my time uh, that I would actually consider awful and ugly. <laughs> so from that point of view, I think this thing is a hit. So if Borg is your kind of cu your cup of tea, then I think here you go. Um, the bust itself from the, from the brick building technique looks 
quite amazing, I must say. I mean, it's it's really a masterclass in great design, um, especially for a set that you can buy. This is almost like mock kind of detail, but um, yeah. Uh, nevertheless, I would never put this in my my space <laughs> because it's it's I don't know. I am I, I'm pretty sure I will have nightmares when I put this in, into my office. Anyhow, one thousand six hundred fifteen pieces. It's only an announcement. We do not know the price yet because Blue Bricks, for those of you who may not know, Blue Bricks is only announcing prices. And when the set is available, like this one, Princess Leia, the Royal Castle, the 107-146. So um, actually, um, because, you know, I had this long break, I didn't talk about this that much. Um, I did do on my German uh, news um, podcast. Anyhow, um, basically, this is new. Blue Bricks has started a couple of weeks ago. They announced it maybe two months ago, I guess, um, that they will now start a Blue Bricks Kids line. What is interesting on the line, that it also includes new minifigures. Um, so as you may know, we have in Europe this situation that we have in Europe an IP legal construct that is basically like uh, a trademark, but a 3D trademark. I'm not sure if that is what lawyers call it. But anyhow, Lego has this on the minifigure. So Lego, as you may know, does not have many patents or any of this kind of stuff anymore. They have all run out, but they have in Europe not just the trademark on the Lego logo, but they also have it in this, on a 3D trademark on the minifigure, which I think is quite unique to my knowledge. At least the European Union is the only area I know where this is possible. As a result of that, a ton of minifigures cannot be sold in the European Union. So Blue Bricks in the past had quite some problems as a company that was importing a lot of sets from, um, from Chinese companies, for instance, and they had a lot of, let's say, there was a lot of legal back and forth here between Lego and some of these companies importing these sets. And Lego has won them. And as a result, um, companies are looking for new ways. And so Bluebricks has decided, okay, let's design our own minifigure that um, is, let's say, from a legal standpoint, clean or where we do not expect that Lego can make any trouble in court, um, which obviously is not tested yet. And we do not know how Lego, um, if Lego will even try. Anyhow, so what Blue Weeks has done in order to, let's say, push these new minifigures, they have a collaboration with Cumin, a um, Chinese company doing Chinese kit sets. And they've basically come up with this concept. Okay, you give us a set, we throw in our own minifigures and sell this as Blue Weeks kit. So this is an older human set um, and Blue Bricks is doing this for several of these lines. Anyhow, this one is the biggest by far, 2,482 pieces. I'm actually not sure like how authentic or um, original this design is. I do know that some of these human kit sets designs are very close to several older Lego designs. I'm not sure about this one because I'm not so deep in these older kit sets, but I'm pretty sure it's authentic or, or completely original. I think Lego has never done anything like this, maybe in the Friends lineup. But anyhow, um, yeah, you have a big palace. Um, it's huge and uh, you can play, you could throw a lot of figures in it. Um, it's It has an interesting color scheme. I guess a lot of folks, a lot of girls, I guess most and foremost, are going to love this. Bluebix is selling this for 150 euros over here. Again, includes tax at six cents a piece. That's not too shabby. However, um, um, again, Bluebix Pro, Bluebix Kits is part of Bluebix Pro. That means no digital instruction. Pieces are from Cumin slash Keyplay slash Enlighten. So these are good pieces. Um, usually these sets do not have any pet printed pieces though. And like I said, you have these new minifigures, um, which I don't know, you may like or you may not. For sure, they do not look exactly like Lego minifigures. Let's move on to another announcement, um, what they call a gangster sports car. So I guess this is from a movie. I can't really recall what it's, what the name was. Bluebix is doing this from time to time. And then they have these one of these generic names because obviously they do not have a license uh, to call it that. But I'm pretty sure this is from some movie from the 80s. Can't really recall. Anyhow, 107-549, 1,532 pieces. This, I guess, it's, it's a Lamborghini. Um, again, not really sure exactly from which movie, which license. And then we have a couple of sets for your city. The 107551 is the municipal platform truck convertible. So this is actually quite amazing design. First of all, um, for the international audience, this is, I mean, from a design point of view, this is like typical stuff that is driving around here, like in Central Europe. Um, and But the cool thing is like you have a ton of options to make this like different 
kind of work that needs to be done around the city, around the roads, um, like winter season, summer season, it's all there and you have a ton of flexibility. So keep in mind, these are not like three vehicles. This is one vehicle with different options that are all included in the set, which I think is, is a great way to, let's say, not invest into too many vehicles, but still have variety um, in your city and, you know, go through the seasons, stuff like that. Quite a cool concept. And then they have a very similar thing, um, what they call multi-purpose vehicle the 107 550 um this one here is a f i'm pretty sure a mercedes uh, unimog i'm not sure if it's called that internationally but this is like a, a very well known um mercedes track that of course is again used mostly by um municipals um you know to keep the roads tidy etc but there are even some crazy people who have a lot of money and a lot of space who use this like a motorhome and you can do this with this set as well in general vehicles that is true both for the vehicle I talked about before as well as this one it's like a six to eight stud wide car so basically the size of I guess, yeah, most most Legos, larger Lego City vehicles as well, or a little bit like the Speed Champions. Um, but of course, it's still pretty huge sets because you have all these multi-purpose uh, cap capabilities. So it has 1,000, or it's going to have 1,062 pieces, but again, not yet available, only an announcement. And then we have a police survivor car, car the 107 560, 256 pieces. Um, the only interesting thing I do believe around for me at least for this design is the window piece. I'm I've not seen that one before, so I'm really curious. Um, maybe somebody can write in the comments. I'm not sure if I've seen this one from any other companies before, but I mean there are so many pieces out there. I may be entirely wrong, but this at least for me is a bit interesting. They have this police version that you can actually open up, um, and then you they have with the 107 548 they have also a fire brigade a variant, which is very similar vehicle, just in a different color scheme. And then we have Fire Brigade, a firefighting drone. Not really sure where these are used. I guess everywhere where it's too dangerous for humans, like, I don't know, nuclear power plants or um, airplane, burning airplanes, something like that. Maybe a burning oil rig, uh, I guess. Some, something in this area, 107, 547, 190 pieces. And then we have the 107, 546, the, the fi five. Four six is what I wanted to say. The fire brigade firefighting track vehicle. Not really sure who would do this. Maybe again, you know, firefighters around maybe an oil rig in the Arctic, something like that. I'm not really sure where you would use this. Uh, please uh, educate me in the comment section. I'm not really sure. 607 pieces that I'm sure of. And the entire thing is around 19 centimeters in length and six and a half by eight with and height and yeah oh my god I, I it's 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 a simple design um i guess and i'm pretty sure it's too small for minifigures personally i'm not really sure if i like this kind of design because this is a kind of vehicle and a kind of size where i would love to have preparations for minifigures inside but this thing there's just too much furniture there is no space left for minifigures this is a bit unfortunate but next to that um a nice design and then we have an american police car the 10754 545, um, designed by Adrian. I think the name may suggest that he is from North America, but I think he's from Australia. I heard that before. Anyhow, 1,143 pieces. So this is, um, I guess, 1x12 car or 1x18. So a lot of Bluebix designs in this, let's say, ballpark by means of piece count are usually 1x18. Um, but I haven't done the math, so it's 32 centimeters in length that I do know, and 15 and uh, slightly beyond 15 wide. Um, as always, these are blue brick specials, so uh, they do not come with any pet printed pieces, or and usually also without a sticker. Sometimes they sell a sticker sheet extra, but this is basically it, right? And this is basically how brick. I mean, it's a great brick built design, but it's more like a mock, right? Because you don't have your prints and stickers. Anyhow, the 107 545 uh, is going to have 1,143 pieces. And then we have a tank. This is interesting. So Bluebricks has recently bought a company called Modbricks over here in Europe. Um, some of you, even from the international audience, the, you may know that here in Europe, um, the um, the Razorcrest, the old playset 
could not be called Razor Crest. So Lego had to rename it or rebrand it. And I think it's called like Transport of the Bounty Hunter or something like that. And the reason was that this um, company back in the day, this company called Mobricks, or the, the guy who owned it, anyhow, they registered, registered a trademark on Razor Crest. So it took Disney quite some time to get this one back. Of course, this was like quite a nasty move. So that's actually one of the reasons why I never worked with this shop or company. Anyhow, this company doesn't exist anymore. Bluebix has acquired them. And what they did is basically they are now transferring all the designs that Mobricks had collected over time, working with external designers, basically now transferring them into their own store. That's basically the idea. So this is one of those sets. You can, if you look into under Bluebix sets, under the brand subcategory, Mod Bricks, this, these are all the designs that Bluebix is now transferring into their own portfolio. Um, anyhow, this is Leopard 2 A6. So currently uh, the German armed forces are at the A7. I think the A8 is the next generation. So A6 is pretty new as an iteration. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's it's a German tank. So Blue Bricks has a line for this. Um, they have a German army line of products, but this thing here doesn't fit in there from scale, from concept perspective, etc. I think they just, it's a bit exotic. Um, it's just something they transferred. Personally, I've said this in the past with military I was armed forces in general. I would always go with Kobe, but um, obviously Kobe is more focused on World War II and they're only very, or World War I a little bit. And then, of course, they have a little bit of Cold War or modern armed forces as well, but mostly they're focused on older military historic models. So if you're looking for more, more modern vehicles, obviously you have to look for alternatives and this one here could be one of those. But even here, I would go with the other Blue Bricks line because there they have dozens of vehicles uh, from uh, German armed forces or a couple of other French armed forces as well. So they, I know they have a Leclerc, the French uh, main battle tank, but it's mostly uh, German armed forces, uh, tanks, etc. that they have in this, what they call Bundeswehr, which is the German name for our armed forces um, Bundeswehr lineup, if you will. Anyhow, uh, let's move on with another announcement, the Rail Zeppelin. Um, so this thing actually did exist, I think, it, or maybe it was a prototype. It's like, it's it's pre-World War II, I do believe. I'm not that deep into train history. Anyhow, it's quite an exotic thing, and I do remember when I was a kid, like model trains, a lot of you know big model train collectors, they always had one of those because they look so exotic. Um, that, um, yeah, as a result, um, it, it's, it's quite, a lot of people love to have one of those in their, in their model train collection. But anyhow, uh, now we have this uh, announcement from Blue Bricks, the 107.555, 546 pieces in this bad boy. With that, we're moving on to Kobe. And here we now have, at least in Europe, you can pre-order now the Donier DO17 in the in the Z2 version, the 5754. So Donier DO17 was, I'd say, one of the main bombers um, of a Nazis, Ge Nazi Germany's Luftwaffe Air Force in the beginning of the war. So this thing was uh, built between 1936, so three years before the war started, and then only until October 1914, uh, 1940. Uh, excuse me. After that, I think. Messerschmitt 111 and the Junkers 88, I think, were kind of the more modern um, um, bombers, and they switched to these. So these were then pretty much pretty fast outdated. However, it's still a very well-known bomber because um, it was the main bomber of the German Air Force around the Battle of England. Um, I think they made 2,000 of these around about, and to my knowledge, which is quite surprising, there is none entire thing entire model left uh, on earth so they have all been destroyed i know there are let's say sometimes a couple of pieces and i know they have found a few also like in the channel for instance i think they have found one or two um, but of but there's no entire um, model anywhere left on the planet anyhow blue uh, kobe has done this model in one by 32 scale 1383 pieces two minifigures as always with kobe everything is pet printed no stickers and as like i said you can pre-order it in europe for 83 euros right now at the first retailer but of course more retailers will start to Offer this thing again. Usually with Kobe, it takes quite a while until it makes it across the pond. Um, but I'm pretty sure this thing will be at your disposal for those of you 
over there in North America um, as well. With that, we're moving on to all the Chinese brands. So Forange, they have, uh, we have now availability over here in Europe of the tow truck, the 1618. So um, in, at first sight, this looks like a Lego knockoff because the current Lego tow truck basically has the same color scheme. However, this is system built, so and it's a lot smaller. It's not a Technic set like Legos. So basically, they just share the color scheme. I have actually no idea why Forange went for this scheme because it is so similar to Lego, maybe, but why? Because it's an entirely different thing. Um, or maybe this is a popular color scheme somewhere. Again, this is in like more North American tow truck. Obviously, in Europe, they look very different, so I can't really say for sure. Maybe somebody knows and can write in the comment section um, where this color scheme is coming from. So I don't know what influence for Angus this decision to go with this one if it was Lego or maybe something else. Anyhow with that we're moving on to Mork and there we have a ton of interesting stuff. So first of all the amusement park rotating windmill the 31027. This thing is not very not too shabby. It's 40 centimeters in height. Uh, it's 22 by 18 and it has I think around 1,800 pieces. So that is not small. So if you're like a modular building kind of sizing of your amusement park or, or theme park, um, then this might be your thing. Um, and in Asia, you can get it for around 34 euros plus, or dollars for that matter, um, plus, um, of course, shipping, which is not too small. But nevertheless, I mean, it's quite a bargain, I would, I would argue. Uh, considering the piece count. And with that, we're moving on to the Flower Coffee House, the 31066. It has 1,454 pieces by Morg, and you can get it um, for around 26, 27 bucks, plus, again, shipping. But this is still pretty good price. The interesting thing around uh, here, if you ask me, is that Morg, I mean, they are doing building buildings in this size for quite a while now, but they have done uh, another set um, last year that they called the Coffee Home. It was very similar from Peace Count, similar, I would say, color scheme, also around coffee. Um, I'm not, re not really sure which one I like the more. The, um, the older one, the 31062, looks slightly bigger, even if it has a similar Peace Count. Um, but yeah, here you go. Um, another great addition to the, this more smaller building lineup, I would call it. It's like somehow, it's not really a tiny building like the ones that Kada is doing, like or, or key play for that matter, like 16 by 16 stats kind of size, or 16 by 18. It's also not a modular building. It's it's somewhere in between. It's it's smaller than a modular, but um, a lot bigger than, than many of the smaller buildings. Anyhow, let's move on to um, a great news, um, if you ask me. So Mark is working with a lot of designers out there, great mock designers. In this case, they are working with Peter's Kevin. Um, by the way, I'm not really sure if the order is correct. I would instinctively think it's Kevin Peters, but he's writing himself everywhere Peters Kevin, so that's how I'm going to write and pronounce it. But anyhow, the first German retailer has announced, Blue Ricks in this case, which is not only manufacturer but also a retailer, but technically they're not. Yeah, they are kind of a manufacturer. They don't make their own pieces, but they make their own sets. Anyhow, they are also a big retailer and, and a big one for Mark. And they have announced that they will get these three sets. So this is a mark, by, as always, with where I can identify the designer. Um, you will find also a link to all the pr designs that um, uh, that manufacturers have done by this designer, as always, in SETIB, under the designer. This is both includes, like, employee designers, like from Lego, etc., cetera, um, but also from other companies as well, but also free mock designers, where Chinese brands most and foremost are collaborating with. You will find this all under, if you go in SETIB, database under designer and as always you have your your filter here like i don't know if there is a designer that is starting with dav like david tausia um you will find all the sets from this designer here as well as well as um if you go on the side links to i don't know instagram social media and other accounts anyhow going back um peter's kevin um, I have also linked here the Instagram and the Flickr account. So if you want to take a look at the original and if you go to this Flickr account, you will see that this was by him designed um, basically yeah, to attach the three buildings uh, together, which I do believe is more or less also possible with these Morg sets. However, for instance, if you look at the central building in his picture here, uh, this has no tree, which actually is a necessity. So you can attach 
all three of them together. Here, however, we have this tree. So I think if you want to do exactly what he has done originally, then I think you have to change these a little bit. Uh, Mark is actually also, if you look here, I mean, there is on the box a small picture that suggests that, okay, you can put these together, but I'm not really sure if there is like a two-in-one function in the manual that allows you to exactly replicate uh, what the designer has done on his own Flickr account. Anyhow, these things, um, so we have three sets that start with the 33031. So this is his... Um, his uh, medieval blacksmith uh, it has 1991 pieces all of them are very similar i would say in base size so around 26 centimeters in height and 16 and a half by 21 uh, on the floor and then you have this set 33037 that's the medieval magician 2095 pieces similar in size like i said but um as i also said um the the big difference here is this tree however if you look at this picture now it looks like this entire tree thingy is like a module right you see this here this gap so i guess maybe it's like an extra module that is attached with maybe just a technic pin and then you can remove it and and put all of them together this would be a cool feature um i do believe and then we have the third one the medieval tavern the 33033 uh, again, same designer, 1,872 pieces. All of these buildings um, have no back wall. So basically the idea is you can put it on a shelf, I guess, and then you can turn it around and, and look on the inside, maybe put a couple of cool minifigures in there. I mean, obviously this is a great home for Lego castle minifigures that um, uh, are quite easy to acquire nowadays due to um, their, the availability of most of the pieces in uh, Lego's um pick a brick or a bricks and pieces service, whatever it's called nowadays. So it's quite easy to get a ton of castle minifigures and I think these houses can give them a home. With that, we're moving on to um, what Mold King is calling the mid-age world. Um, and here we have the so-called central lighthouse set, the 16055. Uh, this thing goes for $89 uh, US right now. Um, you can buy it at Afrobrick, for instance, in, in China. And this thing has 1,000, 2,199 pieces. And yeah, it's called Medieval or Middle Age. By the way, there's also, this is, seems to be um, an authorized mock. Um, however, I'm really, I don't know what, who the designer is. So if you know what is behind this signature on the box, please let me know, put it in the comment section um, so I can do my, my research. But anyhow, um, yeah, I mean, it's called medieval, but it, it's, it's more like fantastic. So this is like, looks more like Dungeons and Dragons or something, or, or Lord of the Rings for that matter, than uh, anything that is actually medieval. But nevertheless, I mean, there are white masonry bricks in there. We don't see them in the Lego world that often. And of course, Mold King usually means go bricks pieces which are awesome. I'm a big fan of the Gobrick stuff. Anyhow, um, the, the price per piece is quite good, I would say. You pay currently around four cents uh, a piece, uh, like I said, uh, in, in Asia. Um, the shipping, of course, comes usually on top. And then we have the Medieval Europe Windmill. Please exclude the one here in the title. This is a mistake in the set DB. Anyhow, uh, 1000, the 10060, it's called a medieval European windmill. Um, it's, I'd say it's not really realistic. I've never seen a windmill like this. Um, but of course it is less fantastical compared to the previous set. It has 1,584 pieces and you can buy it for around a little bit more than 70 bucks. Again, in Asia, same designer, by the way. But again, I don't know what who is behind that signature. That's a bit unfortunate. Sometimes these manufacturers, they work with a mock designer, which is great. Awesome. Should do this. All of them should do this. Um, but then they just put the signature on the box and you have to guess like who's behind that. Um, anyhow, um, if you know who did this mock or if you're the designer yourself, um, please let me know. Um, I would like to fix this. Anyhow, this is not a small set. It's 24 by 36 centimeters and 46 in height. So these things are quite large, even larger. And this is like typical Mold King, if you ask me. It's called the Merry Pirate Ship. So this scene seems to be a Mold King original design. So not working with a mock design. Designer, and this thing has 4,147 pieces. It's a bit like the Black Pearl 2 that they did recently, or the um, Forest Cabin, I think it was called. These these sets are simply huge. So what they basically do is they, I don't know, I, it, it's quite an interesting strategy, design strategy, design philosophy, if you will, that, that Mold King has here, because they have several designs 
that are, let's say, yeah, typical themes, um, like designs that you also see from other companies or other um, or mock designers, and then they just throw, let's say, a thousand or two thousand additional pieces in there and just make it bigger. And this is what they did here. I mean, this thing is enormous. Um, but I don't know who buys these things. That's a question that I always have. I did build, um, because I did a German, uh, on my German YouTube channel, a review on the Black Pearl 2. And I mean, this thing is simply too big for its own good. Um, it's lacking the details because it needs all the pieces to go, you know, large. And the proportions are entirely wrong because, um, I don't know, the Black Pearl 2 is a meter and 20 centimeters long. So 120 centimeters. You can't build masts that are this high because usually from ships from this era are usually as high as they are long. So you need masts that are beyond a meter. And this is simply not really feasible with the brick system. At least, I mean, everything is possible, but it would be quite, kind of crazy to do that. As a result, the entire ship looks wrong in its proportions. Anyhow, like I said, they, they like to go big, it seems. Anyhow, this BMOS here is in width because it does have like a, a mast on the side. It's 45 centimeters or or almost 18 inches. In length, it's almost like 90, 39 inches or almost a meter long. This is crazy. This thing is huge, gigantic. But on the other hand, I mean, it's a nice design. It's not really my cup of tea, um, but it is it is nice. It is interesting. It's exotic to a certain degree. And of course, you have like a million very good pieces. Anyhow, available in Asia for around $170 US. With that, we are moving on to the money tree. Um, and this thing is now also available. Um, this is a 10063 plant in a pot. Yeah, I'm not really into plants that much, to be honest. And my wife is doing all of this, so I don't really know how authentic this is. But it looks quite nice. It's a pot. It's, it's on a stand or on a table, I would say, almost. 815 pieces you can buy this actually quite cheap in asia again um but we are in this case this chinese um retailer is always um adding um shipping extra so this is without shipping that's why it looks so cheap but actually i think um it's actually going to be cost you more. And then we have a tank from Panlos. Usually I don't have the Panlos tanks with pictures in the set DB because um, a lot of them have minifigures included. And again, as I talked about before, this is something that you cannot do in Europe, put in minifigures that are basically Lego knockoffs. That is not allowed. Anyhow, 632012 is a T34. I think on the website it says that it has five minifigures included, but it does not show them on these pictures. That's why I can show them to you. And yeah, it's a T-34. I mean, this thing is very important for how the World War II turned out because the Soviet Union not only had an amazing tank, the T-34 was, um, from a technical point of view, quite astonishing, but they could also make like a bazillion uh, of these bad boys. And as a result, I think they, with that, they crushed the German Wehrmacht. Anyhow, this bad boy from Panlos has 1,726 pieces and you can buy it in Asia without shipping, um, to say again, 27 bucks. This is crazy because Panlos is doing really good pieces. From my point of view, Panlos pieces like Gobricks, like Kobe, these are the contenders when it comes to making pieces that are as good or maybe even better than Lego pieces to, uh, to a certain degree. Arcada is in that ballpark as well, but Panlos is definitely on top. I mean, if you look at Lego, Gobricks, Kobe, Panlos, and Kada, not always. They have a couple of pieces that have problems. But in general, these are all top-notch pieces. And get the, getting them for this price, especially Panlos, it's, it's unbelievable. They are sometimes crushing the competition when it comes to great pieces. Usually also pet printed, by the way. Um, so it's not uncommon that you have a lot of pet printed pieces and Panlos sets. Um, Great, great quality for the price, I should say. From from the stuff that I've built so far from them, which is not that many, maybe three, four sets, but I built the big uh, German U-boat from them. Um, I have to show you this. Um, this is, and we have also built a couple of these new Inbrick sets. They are amazing, I can say. And we have built, I don't know, is this like, what is it called? Yeah, this one here, the U-boat submarine. Um, this thing is... I hope that I do not have minifigure pictures in here. This thing is 
quite astonishing. Um, it's it's really huge, as you can see with the new community rating feature I talked about. Um, people rate this thing at 9.3 out of 10. So I myself would say it still has a couple of issues. The manual, the instructions are really tough. So the community believes it's better than I do because I gave it four, four hats, but... Uh, out of five, but um, I mean, it's it's just an astonishing set. I can say this absolutely. It's huge. It's like it's like 120 centimeters in length almost. Um, and the price, however, is outright crazy. So you can buy this for around 120 bucks, and you get so many pieces. It's very authentic, great design. Um, it's it's a bit the selection of which you both they used, especially there's a plug included. Is a bit strange. But nevertheless, the, the the boat itself is quite authentic. It's almost Kobe kind of level, but they do use the regular pieces and not this all the special slopes that Kobe is using. So outside the Kobe universe, um, I think it's the best thing you can buy right now. It's minifigure scale. It's it's amazing. Um, however, the instructions are awful, if you ask me. So I had I had um, I struggled quite a bit. Um, with these instructions because yeah they are very small or the instruction itself is like huge uh, and so that makes the entire build a bit complicated but anyhow great great stuff from fantasy uh, from pan loss with that we're moving on to fantasy and there we have now available of one of the new sets out of the retro series so i um, in the past they have done um, something that um, the retro tv they have actually done two of those great sets a bit both both of them Quite amazing. Fantasy is using um, uh, Gobrix pieces. They are not doing any stickers or pad printed, Kobe style, and um, they are amazing sets and amazing designs. Obviously, I mean, depends uh, if a gramophone is your cup of tea. The 85009, we have here 646 pieces, and you pay around 50 bucks for that. That also is, of course, to be included. Fantasy does not have, I mean, they are not cheap, these sets, right? Uh, keep that always in mind. But they're always done with a lot of, let's say, um, love to detail. And, and I mean, like I said, all this stuff is, is usually pet printed, um, which is quite astonishing. And the design is always authentic. Um, Pantasy is doing really great stuff out there. With that, we're moving on. And I have to go a bit faster, I do believe. There's so much stuff to talk about. Um, Rayo Breaks, they are completing their line of uh, fighter jets. So this is the F-15 E version 33034. This thing has 2,200 pieces. Don't underestimate these sets. They are huge. This thing is 55 by 36 centimeters. So this thing is enormous. And you can get it in uh, from in from China for around 43 bucks again plus tax. And they are also doing with the 33032 and F14. This thing is even bigger, if you will, because of course you can, you know, I guess pull out the, the wings. Uh, or open up the wings, I should rather say. 66 centimeters in width in this case, 55 in length. So again, enormous, 1,600 pieces. I do not know if this stuff um, is stickered or pet printed. It looks a bit strange because it's so many pieces. Um, so here, it because you can see the... Yeah, I don't know. I, I fear it's a big sticker, but I actually don't know. I think you can't tell by these pictures, and I don't know anyone who has actually built them. With that, we are done with uh, set updates or product updates, and then let's move on to a couple of reading recommendations, which is a new chapter that I've just recently introduced, also in the German version. Uh, and with that, two recommendations. One is by BrickNerd, and they have um, here Oscar has written a great piece on what is called illegal snot, stressful techniques for sideways building. So it's not techniques, not stats, not on top. Of course, it's a very well known acronym um, in the in the community, and of course, there's always these talks around illegal building techniques. Um, and of course, what it technically means is what people mean when they say illegal technique is uh, a technique that a Lego designer from the Lego group for a Lego set is not allowed to do. Usually. Because um, what we're talking usually about are building techniques that bring stress on the pieces and may reduce its lifetime, right? And this is, of course, what Lego designers are told. Hey, don't do this because, you know, customers get unhappy if the pieces break. So, but, but in my personal experience, a lot of folks call stuff illegal for whatever reason. So there's a lot of mystery around there. And... Not uh, so, and, and not all of this is true. Anyhow, Brick Nerd, as always, uh, for this site and the kind of stuff they do, they have really 
moved in deep and talked about various building techniques and um, you know why what what does illegal mean and why and you know what you can do and what you can't do what you can do especially with the clip clip is always an interesting piece because so many clips get ruined because people do stuff with them that you better should not do but there's also a lot of stuff that you can do with them that is actually quite okay and people still believe they can so this thing is I think busting a lot of myths around um, snot building techniques so quite interesting Interesting. And going in a similar direction, actually, they go very well together, is a piece by the Rambling Brick. They call it Stressful Legalities. And this, this is like almost like a scientific way of approaching things. So as you can see here, he started to really, you know, get his uh, macro lens out. And let's go, let's go really into the details. And let's look, uh, for instance, here, if you, if you see at this, there is a, a very small difference between the pieces in height. And there's a lot of proof in there, a lot of testing, like what happens if you do, let's throw in uh, tiles in between studs or plates. Great analysis, the best one I've ever seen so far. A lot of proof. Um, so yeah, I really like this piece. I think it's really helping and uh, makes you better understand. Um, and there's a lot of cool experiments. And I don't even know how the, all these measurements were done. But this is this is like micrometers, right? Um, this is this is really tiny, <laughs> but great piece. A uh, lot of education there. With that, we're moving on to the section mocks of the week. And here I have, as always, a small selection. By the way, uh, you may not know in the past, in my old, let's say before I stopped, I always had also section new Lego ideas entries. With that, I talked about all the entries that made the 10,000 uh, supporters. I have basically stopped this series because it was kind of getting ridiculous. So many, so much great stuff. And I think there's not, not so much value. It's interesting to look at them, but let's face it, out of the 40 to 40 five entries per ideas round that lego is getting nowadays they pick two to three so mostly i was showing you stuff that you will never be able to build in your lifetime obviously we have now the brickling designer program etc etc but long story short uh, i decided to skip this one but what i will do is when lego uh, sh closes up the round um then of course they usually do a blog post where they say okay these are the 54 or 45 um, designs we're looking at then we will do a quick roundup um every time in the new show but out and but as an alternative we now do mocks of the week and and Basically, what I'm looking at here are new replicable entries that have been entered since the last news show. I mean, obviously, you know, last <laughs> brick news show was months ago, but obviously it means I'm just looking at the last couple of days. Anyhow, let's get started. And here I looked, um, one thing that I picked was the country store by Plopis. I have no idea how this is supposed to be pronounced. 1,915 pieces are necessary and 10 bucks uh, you have to pay for the instructions. Um, the only drawback of this thing is that he has only or she has only one uh, picture here um, which is very unfortunate because it does claim that there's a highly detailed interior which we cannot see but considering how detailed it is on the outside I do believe the claim um, this thing has a couple of very interesting building techniques it's very detailed I really like the tree or plant design so if you look at this this is very similar to Lego's bonsai uh, which had these um, pink and white was only pink or on pink and white anyhow these I think it was pink frogs, right, on, on white limb elements, um, but they also had, I think, green frogs on the green limb elements. However, these here are turned upside down, and as a result, you get out of this, like I said, well-known building technique, you get an entirely different block, which I personally think is really, really great. Uh, all in all, great design detail. Then we have a design here from Lux Bricks. I think this designer is here from Central Europe, 743 pieces in the Lion Knights Bridge. So Lux Bricks has been quite busy in the recent months to basically give you an entire landscape. You can build around your Lion Knights castle. So there are Lion Knights pieces, a lot of them. Um, like you can build your own tournament, you have an outpost, you have all this kind of stuff, but you can also build out, let's say, the opposite, which is, of course, the Falcons, Black Falcons Keep, Falcon Stable, but also the Forestmen, of course, everything is possible. 
and uh, even the Wolfpack uh, can be represented here. So it's quite it's quite a lineup, and the newest addition is the Lion Knights Bridge, 743 pieces, five bucks for the instruction. And then we have a free of charge Micro Ultra Micro Diorama from Jelco. Great design account. So if you're if you're into diorama small builds. I highly recommend taking a look at this account, but uh, this design here, which um, is actually not even the newest one, but it's the one I'm talking about today, is from Ahsoka Season 1 and the New Republic Defense Fleet. And this is like in 400, 540 pieces, it's the entire fleet. It's so amazing what this designer can do with so few pieces. And I mean, 400, 540, I'm mixing up the numbers today. I need more coffee for sure. Anyhow, uh, it's, it's unbelievable what you can do. And I mean, 540 pieces is something that even on Bricklaying is not that expensive. So I really recommend to check his stuff out. Um, however, keep in mind, this thing is free of charge, but it's only an I.O. file. So you need a stud, um, stud, studio, Bricklaying studio um, a software to, to basically read this one out. And it's not really a step-by-step -step instruction, um, but of course it gives you all the details that you need. And I would say for 500 pieces, that's totally okay. You don't need a step-by-step -step instruction for that. Just keep this in mind. It's not like a PDF that you can simply download. And this was wrong. I should not have done that. Anyhow, with that, we're moving on to uh, by Pierre Mox. Pierre Mox is the king of modular alternates, I would say, on Rebrickable. And this uh, newest design here, 2,581 pieces, basically an alternate of the Jazz Club and it's just transferring Usually what PL Mox is mostly doing is that you get an entirely different mock. As I always say, especially the alternate build community gives a lot of Lego sets a lot of additional lifetime. This is especially true for modular. So I would argue that if you're on a budget, just buy one Lego modular per year and then build every month a new alternate. You will have a lot of building fun, a lot of variety the entire year and you just have to buy one set. But anyhow, a lot of people love to have many buildings, so obviously that in this case this is not for you. But if you don't if you are tight on space and budget, this is great. Anyhow, what he did here, however, is much more simple. He just transferred the regular building into a, a corner building. Personally, I think Lego has even too many corner modulars. Um, but of course, if you want to, if you in your city are a bit, you know, um, you're in a pinch here because you need another corner building, then of course this mod, this manual is for you. It's 10 bucks. That's not too shabby. With that, we're moving on to one of my most favorite designers, Brett, also here from Century Europe. Um, and he has built um, a Venator micro build a couple of weeks ago. He published that on Rebrickable, free of charge, I do believe. This is not to scale to the Lego exec executor, but um, it's the same size. So the idea is basically, okay, I have the executor, now I want to put more stuff like this on the shelves. As we all know, there are the rumors that Lego intends to do a lot more stuff like this as well, but I think they will not do at least not next year Venator. So this is great. And of course, with the Venator, you need a magnificent claw star frigate. Um, however, he is putting a lot of disclaimers in the text that this thing is not easy to build. However, it is free of charge, so you may, um, may take a look. And I think it looks quite astonishing. Very well done, great design. Um, and yeah, really love it. Great ship, awesome. With that, we're moving on to an enormous beast by Sizimong77, not really sure. Black Falcon, Royal Castle. And uh, this thing costs $30, but I mean, it's 10,000 pieces in the mark. So I guess that's that's more than justified. But nevertheless, if you look at it, I mean, look at all this, let's say, stud craziness here. Uh, I'm pretty sure at least I would throw in another 1,000 thousand pieces, you know, for all the, the greeble and everything, right? Um, um, basically detail everything. So you, you have 10,500 pieces, but... You can do a lot more even. But this thing is simply huge, but it is built. So it's not just uh, from, from digitally built, but actually for real, which I think, especially with larger mocks, that's what I would always look for because very often this stuff is not really stable um, because there's a lot of stuff you can throw together in, in, a, in a digital builder, but that in reality it will just break apart, especially larger sets because weight becomes an issue. Uh, as a result, it's always good to know that the designer took the time to build it and for real. And then we have something which I could found very interesting uh, by Strnet. Um, that is a base for the Winter Chalet. That is, of course, one of the sets from the Brickling Designer Program from the, I think, the Chalet was second wave. I'm not really sure. One of the earlier waves. So um, anyhow... Um, 
is actually how it's going to look like when it's all done. And and the great thing about it is, I mean, first of all, I do like, as always, the idea to do something around this set, same way as for minifigures, you know, just don't put it just on a shelf, but think about building small dioramas where you can present your minifigures. And I believe many sets have the same thing, that the set gets a lot more value if you're not, if you're not just throwing it on a shelf, but actually put a small thing around it. Um, and the cool thing about this one here is in addition, I think you can see this, I think there was a picture. Ah, you see this here. Um, it's not really fully like built into the new base. You can just throw it on top. I think that makes a ton of sense because Brickling Designer Program sets are like almost their weight in gold nowadays. So if you want to sell this thing one day, of course it's cool if it's not mixed up with a mock piece, if you will, right? Because that of course makes it a lot easier to make sure that all the pieces that belong into the set are still part of it. And you don't have to, you know, start counting pieces and stuff. So that's what I think. It's a great design. Personally, I would say from an optical standpoint, this is not really my cup of tea. I don't like these Lego tree pieces. And that's, that's also a bit too colorful here. But the idea, I think, is, is just great. And again, if you like this design by Stillnet uh, for 13 bucks, you're good to go. And with that, we're moving on to another mock of uh, Ratatouille. Uh, obviously, that is a very well-known Pixar movie. And here we have from Brick Project, Gus Gusto's Restaurant, 2,993 pieces. So this thing is huge. It's 25 bucks for the instructions. That's not too... That's, that's on the higher end, let's put it that way. And this thing is not a modular, even if it looks like this from the beginning. But, I mean, it is a very modular building, but from a, let's say, scale perspective, it's slightly different. But you should be able to throw in a couple of minifigures for sure. And I think it's very detailed and has all the important scenes. Obviously, it's all shrink down according to scale, but um, you have it You have it all, right? You have, like, the kitchen and the dining room, of course, the upper floor, and it's all very authentic. I mean, I haven't seen the movie for a couple of years, but this is exactly how I remembered it. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. And then we have by Pixel Dan, um, uh, who has done an amazing job very recently with a couple of very cool marks, like he did the UCS T6 Jedi Shuttle, this one here. Uh, for me, one of the coolest Star Wars marks of all time. But what he has also done is like... Um, now three or four, if you will, of the basically improvements or upgrades for the recent Lego Star Wars set. So the Jedi's shuttle, um, but also for the ghost. And these things look just so much better. I should always add, I always do this. I mean, Pixel Dan is also really talented when it comes to, let's say, from a digital perspective, great pictures out of it. I think that's also, um, yeah... Uh, he's really good in this. So these things, of course, are also like the lighting and everything is amazing as well. But the brick design is, is just great. I mean, this thing looks so much better than the Lego set, right? I mean, look at this. Um, this difference is huge, but still it has the main design language of Lego set. So that's still fine, but I think this looks a lot more like something you can put on your shelf. Anyhow, he did this with the Jedi Shuttle, he did this with the Ghost, and again, look at his Jedi Shuttle. And I think he has also a picture in here. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, we all know this is a big problem of the Lego set, that from one side it looks quite nice, from the other side it looks horrible, and he has fixed this as well. So this thing looks from both sides quite well. Anyhow. Now let's come back to the today's work. Um, he has also done this for the Ewing, for the one of the for the two fighters out of the seven five three six four set. And again, this is more subtle, if you will, the changes. Um, but again, they make this a better looking set, even more so for Shin Hati's Starfighter. Um, and he, again, he has here a comparison. Again, the changes are subtle, but it looks so much cooler and so much more authentic. It's not so many pieces, I think, that you have to throw in addition. But this way, I would even I would put this thing on, on the shelf as well, while the Lego version, I think, was lacking a bit. Um, anyhow, great additions from Pixel Dan to, uh, for the Star Wars community. And with that, we're moving on to a rebrick, basically, of a green grocer, the old Lego modular, the 10185 by Jiren. Selling the instructions for six bucks. So basic ideas here. Okay, let's see if we can rebrick this with today's pieces, uh, the pieces that are available today, which could be a lot cheaper than a regular rebrick by means getting exactly the pieces, or even of cheaper than, of course, than building buying the original Lego set used. Um, so I think this is a great alternative. Obviously, you can use new pieces, and it's I mean. You know, green grocers see it in a box. I think this is something that you don't want to buy and then open it up. <laughs> I think this is maybe that's something that you keep closed and put it on the shelf, but 
not not open not breaking the seals but anyhow this is a good um, alternative that may maybe even cheaper than uh, trying to get a used screen grocer with that we're moving on to um yeah it's not really an alternate bit or not really a modification technically that's what the, how the designers put this into rebrickable but uh, rex fg 1086 pieces for the republic gunship uh, from the wolfpack from the 104s uh, which means it's not like yellow and with the lime green in front and uh, not yellow blue dark blue with the yellow or uh, lime got my colors wrong today as well in front um, but it's basically the lego design there are a few additions as well like the turret here the um, is is improved as well the auto turret uh, on the wings but which of course a lot of uh, folks criticized around the lego design i mean in general i'm not a big fan of the new lego design of the gunship i must say i have built it i have i still have it but it's it's too small from my point of view um i, I you just can't get i mean it, it may be even okay by means of being to scale but you just can't get enough minifigures in there. And for me, the gunship needs a ton of clones uh, on the inside. But anyhow, um, nevertheless, the color scheme, of course, is very exotic. Um, and as a result, um, we have now a ton of stuff on Rebrickable of recoloring these. And I think this is a good one. You can never go wrong with the wolf pack. Anyhow, let's move on. So three turns tavern by Bean Venus. Only three bucks for a mock for with 3,836 pieces. This sounds crazy, but actually all of his mocks are priced like this. I don't know what is wrong with this mock designer, but it's giving his instructions almost away for free. Um, actually, for this cheap price, I would consider not even bothering and just give it away entirely for free. Anyhow, a great, great move uh, giving away these great instructions for such a cheap price. And yeah, this thing, I guess, uh, it's very detailed. It's a tavern, like, I don't guess, something like 18th, maybe 19th century, uh, and goes together, I think, with his Puerto uh, Santa Maria Customs House. Um, you can see this here if you look at the um, basement construction, if you will, so you can connect these. This is like a modular concept, if you will. And this thing had, uh, back in the day, I talked about it, uh, 4,800 pieces and goes for four bucks. So he sticks to his price plan, which is quite crazy. Anyhow, um, I hope you like the show. For those of you who watch this on YouTube, please leave a like or comment or even better subscribe to the channel for you podcast listeners. As always, you can um, see this on YouTube, including all the stuff that I'm showing here on screen, but you can also uh, just listen to it, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to the show. Please leave wherever you are a review, follow, comment, subscribe. Really uh, looking forward also to your feedback. Thanks for listening. See you next week.